The support worker and assistant practitioner workforce are growing rapidly in many countries and Australia and the United Kingdom are no exceptions to this. Our team are particularly interested in increasing the effectiveness and efficiency of new ways of working and we've done a number of research projects around the assistant practitioner workforce. We know that it's expensive and time consuming to introduce new roles and because of this a number of tools have been introduced to support the implementation of, of workforce change. One of these tools is the Calderdale Framework. There are others. The Calderdale Framework was developed in the United Kingdom and has had wide ups uptake there and in Australia around the implementation of new roles. The purpose of our project was to look at whether the implementation of the Calderdale Framework was actually associated with better adherence to change and better outcomes for the, the projects that were implementing new roles. We looked at this by um, doing a retrospective evaluation of three completed evaluations of support worker roles, two in Australia and one in the United Kingdom. Uh, the United Kingdom one was on an occupational therapy assistant. In Australia they were on a podiatry assistant and a speech pathology assistant. We took the Calderdale framework which identifies seven stages for introducing a new role and we turned that into a, a template using a qualitative methodology a bit like the Ritchie and Spencer framework approach and we applied that to the completed evaluations of the support worker roles and we were able to look at whether or not those projects had adhered to the stages of the Calderdale framework. I should point out that none of those projects had actually used any implementation framework in their development. We then looked at the outcomes for all of the projects and we identified three levels of outcomes. The first one was the effective and efficient use of the role. The second one was role sustainability, so was there continued uptake of the role once the um, initial implementation had been introduced. And finally, what were the career development opportunities for the new workers. What we found was that the projects adhered to the seven stages of workforce change in different ways, so we had some confirming and disconfirming cases, and they all had different outcomes as a result. But what we were able to show by looking at those completed evaluations was that adherence to the stages of the Calderdale framework was clearly associated with better sustainability of the role, better use of the role, so more efficient use of the role, and better career development opportunities for the role. So whilst the Calderdale framework isn't the only tool that can be used in workforce change, we know that it is a useful tool, that it does um, lead to uh, better outcomes for services trying to implement workforce change. Further research could be undertaken on different types of evaluations and using different tools, but one of the recommendations from our project would be that adhering to a standardised process for implementing workforce change does lead to better outcomes. We hope you enjoy reading the paper.